apologies. Uh, I'm, I'm really not sure what is happening with my microphone this morning. Okay, uh, I will attempt to just go through quickly with us the changes to the CSEC mathematics uh, syllabus, but in particular, I will be emphasizing the SBA component and uh, how can we as teachers uh, work around with the with the SBA um, so that we would understand that it is not uh, so much of a tough task as uh, as we may as we may be tempted to believe, and uh, not just that, but we will also be able to guide our students properly so that they can make the best of this experience of this new experience. Mathematics uh, there are some changes to the syllabus, in fact, some major changes to the syllabus. In particular, there is some change, there is a major change with the rationale of the syllabus. We're, now we're emphasizing uh, in the rationale uh, the pillars of mathematics as intellectual development, utilitarian, applicability, aesthetics, and Epistemological approaches. Uh, and emphasis is also based on the benefits of the syllabus, how the syllabus is sufficient within the other uh, exams of CXP, master exams of CXP. And consideration is, in, in this consideration is given to the regional and international stakeholders within the rationale of the syllabus. So you'll see that the rationale has been changed completely. Among the changes, we can speak about the core and optional uh, objectives um, have been removed. You may not find that anymore. Where all objectives are now compulsory. Some topics, uh, sorry, the topics or material computation merge. And the marks have been adjusted accordingly. Uh, we can talk about the maximum time for marks. And we see that uh, the students effectively will be given a bit more time on the, on the exam, in particular the paper two. The students will be given a, a bit more time if you're going to look at it as a uh, number of minutes per mark. The SBA is, is, is one of the major changes to the syllabus, and I know that's what all of us uh, are here to hear about. Some content has been changed. Uh, there is now content slash explanatory notes. And these explanatory notes offer information on, for example, restrictions, where restrictions are, are, are where the, the student as well as the teacher uh, are advised uh, as, as to what level or to what depth should be uh, covered within the, with that particular topic. So the teaching and learning activities are also uh, added to the syllabus. And sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so the teaching and learning activities are also added to the syllabus. And uh, these uh, follow most of the, the, the top, these follow all the topic areas, I should say, not most of them. General objectives for statistics in particular, um, has been adjusted to include measurement skills, for example, and to reduce the occurrence of errors in statistical computation. So we find that uh, the general objectives for a number of the topics have been uh, modified, but I mentioned this one in particular because uh, most, for most persons, the statistics uh, will be used more often in the FBA component. So this one here is emphasized in the presentation. Uh, the emphasis is made on estimates, in particular estimates for group data. So we are encouraged to emphasize that students are, uh, sorry, emphasize that when we have group data, then we're talking about estimated mean, for example. The students should understand that with good data information is lost, and this becomes useful for presentation and for the SBA purpose. There is a reintroduction of the concept of standard deviation, uh, the use of standard deviation 
and this is important as students will be using the standard deviation in their SBA. So they have to enhance their SBA. The glossary, there are some modifications to the glossary. We have the examination terms, the glossary specific examination terms, as well as mathematical terms. Uh, we are encouraged to help students to become familiar with the, with the terms in both sections of the glossary, in particular the examination terms, help our students to use these terms um, as often as possible to become familiar with them, what they mean. So if they see these terms appearing in a question, then they should understand exactly what the question is asking for. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to the definition of the radical, the root, and square root, or square root. Please ensure that students are well familiar with these definitions. Now let's talk about the SBA. And I would like to, in the first case to say that as teachers, we have to find ways to make doing this SBA uh, an efficient process um, in terms of our time, in terms of our energy, and as efficient as possible. So while we encourage students to identify topics that they would like to do as SBA, it is also open for us as teachers to guide the process. In so doing, we may want to identify a particular uh, problem area, for example, and have the students then identify possible topics which can come out of this problem area. And especially for persons who have large classes, it may become difficult to cope with a situation whereby you are managing 90 students and then you have 90 different FDA uh, problem areas to deal with. So it may be convenient for us as teachers to identify a particular or a set of problem areas and then group the students, acquire the problem area, and then have them identify some topics which can then come out of each problem area. So that when we are going to, when we are going to manage our SPAs, then we will find that it will be easier on us as the teachers because we know that our mind is focused to a limited number of problem areas. Uh, where it, and that depends on the class, on the number of students that you are supervising as well. So, for example, a problem area which I've used in, in a few sessions before, the problem area of queuing. The students will be very familiar with this because they, they, they form queues. Uh, they start forming queues for a very small age. And they, they continue, and they will continue whether in school, uh, in the work, whether at utility, uh, utility companies, uh, at, at business places. At the airport, they will continue to form queues. And queuing is a problem, especially when it is affecting, uh, affecting your business. Uh, so the students will find queuing to be an interesting topic, for example, and they may come up with multiple subtopics under this, with, under this problem area of queuing. So, for example, we have here six. Uh, possible subtopics, six possible titles for research for SBA, which can come out from queuing. And I can imagine that in the same way how these six are identified, right within queuing, you may find another six, and you may end up with a total of six different topics which could come out from queuing. So, for example, if we can go to then we have like. Uh, the waiting time for a particular transaction at a commercial bank. The time spent in vehicle traffic on a particular stretch of road uh, during the morning peak hours. The carbon footprint of vehicle accused on a particular street. Now, this one here might be 
of interest to a student who uh, provides students, for example. Uh, and one of the things which we want to ensure that we do is that we allow our students to select topics within their comfort zone. Select topics which they will be uh, very happy to do, rather than us imposing a particular topic on, on the student. Then as much as the problem area will be queuing, then a science student may then be interested in how cues affect, uh, like as in this case, um, the, the buildup of, of emission, for example, on a particular street. A student might be interested in that. Uh, the time spent in outpatient before seeing a doctor, the time spent on hold on the telephone while waiting for a customer service representative. So what we find happening is that you may have a variety of students with a variety of interests, uh, career objectives, and or uh, they may also have a particular liking at the point in time, whether the student is um, is a, is a biology student and agriculture or in terms of their favorite uh, subject area. And they may have a particular interest in a certain field as mathematics because as for the purpose of this FBA, it would be very good if the student can do something in, a, in an area which they are interested in. A model of the time it will take to evacuate school building or a particular school building in an emergency. Now, this can be someone who is interested in, in engineering, in engineering, and they now uh, may, may be observing schools and observing how the schools are constructed, and may realize from their reading uh, some of these schools might be violating building codes, for, uh, and for example, in terms of evacuation, can a school be evacuated in two minutes, in five minutes. The student might also be interested in how long it will take, all right, for, for, for a school to be evacuated. Now, what we see is that, you know, one of these students, that, that, you know, one of these topics may then relate to a particular interest of the student. The topics are also, um, sorry, these, these FPAs will also be usable. So, so, for example, the, the last topic which we talk about here, model of the time it will take to evacuate a uh, school building in an emergency. Um, this such an SBA can be used by the management of the school or the Ministry of Education, all right, to guide them in their policy making, etc., and, and, and enforcing certain laws. Uh, imagine what it would be if a student do an SBA like this and then find out that maybe 30% of all schools in a particular country are not safe because it would take too long for that for the schools to be evacuated. That would have a lot of um, that would be a lot of information and useful information for the Ministry of Education or engineers who might be designing schools in the future. So what we find is that from this one topic is that you can find a variety of topics. So this, therefore, is helping us as teachers to, as I mentioned before, to make work easier for us in terms of our concentration, about how much, um, how much problem areas do we have to focus on. Because all of these areas would be about queuing. So our focus would be on queuing. And if we have two, four, six topics there, that is six students already taken care of, are Six groups of students already taken care of, and then we may identify another or a couple of other research uh, problem areas and have the students do something similar. I think, uh, Sam, um, should I pause for questions at this time? Yes, I think that's a good place to pause. Hi, good morning again, colleagues. I see there are 96 of you with us this morning. Uh, do you have any questions for Dwayne? If you do, could you put your hand up and then I will release, I would unmute you. So I see Kamal Harding Hodge. Kamal, would you like to speak now? 
Good morning, Kamal. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Kamal. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Duane, can you hear him? Yes. Go ahead. So I've just been uh, trying to follow what's going on. I wasn't really hearing the first part of the presentation. But we started very late, so you probably actually got most of it. Okay. How many, how many persons are in this uh, WebEx right now? Right now there are 96. Uh, did you do you have any question in relation to the information Dwayne has presented so far? No, no, I'm good so far. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else has any question? You can uh, raise your hand, and I will unmute your mic so that you can ask your question. I have seen one more hand up from Dominica. Yes, Dominica, Community High School. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I got some. Um the information concerning topics, that it is better that the students select their own topics. However, I would like to know whether, as teachers, we can suggest certain topics, not necessarily the area, but the specific topic that the student can work on. That is question one. OK, Step could off. you hold one second so that um, either Dwayne or Alfian can respond? OK. Dwayne, do you want to respond to that? Um, I, I didn't hear it clearly, so if you can um, just summarize the question for me, Right. So her question was, she said that she heard you suggested, you gave some suggested topics, but she wants to know if the teacher can actually suggest specific topics to the students. Okay. Um, I will pass that to Alcian, please. Alcian? Um, good morning, everyone. The teacher can help the students to select the topics, but we would prefer if the um the topics come from the students. But if this is a problem, then the teacher can help. I'm not saying the teacher should do everything, but you know, the teacher can guide the students. But the preference is for the students' topics to come from the students. Right, right. That's the preference. But I would suggest though, Sam, um, that um. The teacher could do a, a project first with the student before they um before they assign projects for the SBA. I think the teacher should take the students to a topic first. They could go through it as a class, and then um, the teacher can proceed to ask the students to come up with their own topics for the SBA, as well as the students can work in group on groups on on different topics. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Dominica, next question. Okay, I noted that you gave some SBA topic expansion on queuing, and I find them to be really um, useful. I would like to know if, for example, I may use those very same topics as suggestions, because I, I, I think the topics are quite interesting. Um, for me as an adult, and I guess for the young people, as they start doing various transactions. For example, um, at a particular bank in Dominica, when I go on a mountain, you may find that um, only two or three tellers are at, um, are at work, and that takes quite a bit of time. So it is of interest. So I would like to know if those same two topics may also be used as examples for our SBAs. All right, Ms. Joseph, let us um, ask Alcian or Renville to respond to your question. Yes, uh, you can use those same topics, clean topics. We just wouldn't want to see you using them every year. But <laughs> you could start with these. Alcian, am I correct in saying one of the main thrusts of this syllabus is that the students should use the SBAs to solve real life problems in their societies or their communities? Yes, Mr. Sam, that, that's correct. So if, so, the, if, 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 so when, if the student identifies a, a problem, and we, we could use that problem to um, formulate the SBA question to help the students solve these problems, because that's the whole idea of applying what they have learned to real life um, activities. 
So taking Ms. Jones, Ms. Joseph's um, point um, a little further, let's say uh, she noted that every month when she goes to this particular bank, there are only three tellers and the lines are very long. So then her students can actually do some sort of mathematical calculation and actually take it to the bank with some sort of um, recommendation in terms of how they should address this issue. Those are the type of things you're talking about. Yes, yes, certainly, certainly. Okay, yeah, I think, uh, so, uh, Renville, I was speaking, Alcian, as well as the lady from Dominica, Ms. Joseph, and they were, she was asking, she was pointing out that at this particular bank in Dominica, every month end, there is, uh, there are only three tellers serving hundreds of customers. So I was asking Alcian if this is the type of problem, real, wo real world problem that we want to solve, and suggesting that the students can actually work on some sort of formula to solve this problem and share it with the bank. Okay. Yeah, um, I would also wish to add that, uh, that based on some of the questions, um, based on a couple of questions so far, that the process for having students to do a topic which um, they are interested in is that uh, it, it will also make work easier for the teacher because if the students are asked to do a topic or, or to investigate a particular title, a particular problem, which they are not interested in, then what we will find is that the teacher will have to be behind the student uh, and coaching them, uh, giving them extra coaching every step of the way. And that can be, uh, that can be fatiguing for the teacher. All right, of course, if the student who is doing something which they are really interested in, you will find that they, that they may need less supervision from the teacher because they would have that motivation to, uh, to go ahead and to complete the, the FBA. Very good and point. Secondly, mm -hmm. Yeah, and secondly, the, we, we should try to uh, help our students at this early stage to understand the importance of doing uh, an SBA research that is usable, so that the findings will be, will be usable and it will be relevant because we don't want our students to be doing an SBA and then whatever the result they come up with, whatever findings they come up with, no one will ever, uh, will ever use it or find it to be of in any way interesting. So that in, in, in the case of the bank example, So the, the bank example raised by Ms. Joseph from Dominica is an excellent one, where if the, the students can try and come up with some sort of formula in terms of how many uh, tellers, how long each teller takes to serve each person and whether they need to in, increase the number of tellers at particular times of the day or particular times of the week or month, this would be a very uh, useful exercise for those students. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Dominica. I have Mount St. Joseph Catholic High School. Please take the mic. Hello. Are good morning. Here? Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. My question was already answered, so it's okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. I will go to Vanessa Thomas from Campion College. Vanessa, you have the mic. Vanessa, do you still have a question? Okay, uh, Ms. Robinson, go ahead. Hello, good morning. Good, good morning. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my question is, I'm going to take the example for queuing. Um, what if, example, um, two students de um, decided to do the wait time for a particular transaction at a commercial bank? Now, my question is, uh, two students decided to do the research on that topic. Would they have to write individual write-ups, or can they just do one SBA for the two? All right, excellent question. I know ASEAN, I'm sure ASEAN has the answer for that. These students can work together and have one write-up. 
for the um for this exercise is where we wish to work together. Okay. So, Ms. Robinson, one of the changes in CXC now is that we have group SBAs, mm -hmm. and I'll might be able to speak to that a little later, but we are now accepting group SBAs. Okay, cool. Someone was asking a question in the chat. If uh, you have a class of 30, you could divide them into groups of six or groups of five. Alcian, do you just want to address the issue of size of groups? But so this also came up in the in this webinar two weeks ago. Um, I don't think we should have. Uh, for me personally, whilst there is no policy as such as to the size of the group, but as a past teacher, I don't think we would want to make our groups too big. So I would suggest that the groups be about five, five in each group. Or so. I, I, I don't think we should have a big group like with 10 or 12 or, or something like that. You know? So that can be a problem. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Vanessa, are you back? Vanessa Thomas? If not, I have not seen any other hands up. So I will ask Mr. Renville to continue. Go ahead, um, Dwayne. Yep. Okay. Um, I will continue. So, if we have these topics like these here, then the students can select uh, a topic. So, what we may find is that one student may select a particular topic, or we can have a group of students, uh, as was mentioned by Alton, a group of students selecting a particular topic. and. Uh, and I think I would also, anyhow, I would leave that for later discussion about the group, as Mr. Sam has pointed out that uh, I'll we'll be dealing with that later. Uh, okay, let's continue. So, having identified a particular topic, uh, if the students select any one of these topics here, then the next thing which we want to ensure is that our students can construct a title, uh, a workable title which would be as specific as possible, uh, but as short as possible too, all right? Um, we do not want when you're reading, well, when, it, when you're reading a, a title of a student that it is vague and you cannot, uh, you, the title does not say exactly where and what the research is about. So if the students will be talking about cues in in, in commercial banks, well then the, in the title they can be specific to say which, which type of cues. We are talking about cues in uh, commercial banks. Uh, is it a particular commercial bank? Is it a particular chain of, of banks? Um, where the bank located in the city, in the country? Uh, because of course you will have different, uh, different dynamics according to where the location of the bank is. Um, so, as specific as possible to state exactly what the problem, uh, what, is, what, the, what the investigation is about, what the FDA is about, um, some demographics of it um, within, the, within the title of itself. So, when you read the title, concise and nice, but then at the same time, you will have a, a fairly good understanding of exactly what the FDA is about. The students should give an introduction where they will state uh, objectives and uh, give description of the project, uh, a brief description of, of what the project is about. And given that they will just be a, a thousand words to play with, uh, some of us may say some other words, but then sometimes you may find that it is too few. Um, the students should, uh, but should be encouraged to be as brief as possible. So a little brief description of the project. And uh, the state objectives of the project. Um, we should try and ensure that we encourage students not to give or, or not to identify a project which may have about 10 to 15 objectives, uh, because at the end they will they will have to ensure that the project um, looks at all of the objectives. Or the, the, the FDA the research looks at all of the objectives. So a couple objectives. Um, workable, meaningful objectives would be good. 
the data collection the data collected um, should be specific to the problem. Uh, population should be mentioned uh, where, 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 where it is possible to mention the population because not in all cases we may, we may be able to identify a population. And the sample should be mentioned if a sample is extracted and it should be, the process uh, can be stated. Uh, again, this doesn't have to be any elaborate discussion. Uh, the student can, can maybe give a sentence or two explaining how they went about obtaining the data and, uh, and how they went about obtaining their sample. The method and the instrument for collection of the data. Uh, the student should be encouraged to, to justify the, the method and the instrument used. In, in twofold. In one way, the student can justify it by stating uh, whether this method or whether this instrument is, is useful, is it, is it workable, is it suitable to collect a particular set of data. And in the second way, then they can be encouraged to justify it as in, in a comparative way to say, okay, um, observation is, is suitable and um, it, it is more suitable as compared to, for example, a questionnaire, which may lead to, to some type of bias or, or misinformation. All right, so they can ensure that whatever method they have, it is a suitable method. And among the possible methods that you could use to collect the data, the one which they're using is one of the most suitable. All right, in, in justifying the, the method which they, they use to collect the data. Now, of course, in some cases, you may find that students may use multiple methods to collect data, especially if they're collecting a variety of data and from a variety of sources. Storage and security. Uh, it is good for our students to pay some attention to when they collect data to ensure that they have the, that they secure data and um, and where they store it, um, and that can also be reflected in the in the FDA document. All right, so that persons reading their FDA will know that uh, that they would have given some attention to how the data is stored, retrieved, and the security of the data. With regards to presentation of the data, um, teachers are encouraged to ensure that the student present, gen the student, uh, present genuine data. Uh, I know this might be a challenge in some cases, but as far as possible, if we can ensure that the student um, actually went about conducting a survey or actually went about observing or measuring uh, sample elements and, and so on and the data should be accurately presented. So if the student is going to use a table, a bar chart, or any other type of method of presentation of data, then the student should ensure that it is accurate, and not just accurate, but it should be appropriate. So if the student is presenting, for example, data which is collected over a period of time, then from the in-class lesson, the students would know that data collected over a period of time is more suitably represented with a line graph. Uh, if data is, is continuous, if they're dealing with continuous data, as for example, in obtaining the, the length of leaves on a particular, uh, on a particular plant, uh, the student might be interested in observing, for example, um, the, the height of let us say the plant, um, the seasoning echelon, the students might be interested in that, or, or might observe that in a particular farm or a particular region of the country, um, they go to, to, to longer um, heights uh, against another section of the country, and they might be interested in that. So in a case like that, the students, from in fact, lesson, the students will know that, okay, the most appropriate way to present it is using a histogram. All right, so 
they should use uh, accurate, they should have the data accurately as well as use appropriate tables and graphs. The measures and approaches should also be appropriate. So if they're going to use, uh, let us say, measures of location or measures of spread, well then the measures should be matching with the data type which they have. So if they are collecting uh, nominal data, for example, they, they are identifying the names of cars, for example, then so in class lessons again, the students will know that uh, you, you do not find a mean for nominal data. So you will not be able to find what is the average name of a car. All right, so whenever they do the SBA, the, the, the mathematics component of this SBA should be spot on. And of course, it would be a different reflection of what they, they do in class. So that's why it is emphasized in the syllabus document that the SBA component should not be uh, separated from what is done in class, but the two should go hand in hand uh, so that they will complement each other. The students can use what they learn in class to uh, work on their SBA, and then also from doing their SBA, they would have been able to master what is taught in class um, from, the, from the exercise of doing the SBA. The data presentation and the data analysis, um, these statements can be made on what the what, 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 these, what these diagrams are showing, uh, what can you deduce from these diagrams and so on in terms of the data analysis. At this level, we do not expect the students to go too in-depth in any analysis. Of course, if a student is knowledgeable, and, the, and if the student um, is reading far and wide, and the student has the competence to, to go a bit and do some more uh, analysis as compared to the other students, so then it is fine, but uh, we should not penalize one student or a set of students for not going too much in depth into uh, statistical analysis. Uh, if, uh, if that's not required at the CSEC level, and um, or even though one group of students who might be more advanced than the others are doing it, then that shouldn't be our yard. Right? Uh, the discussion of the findings, um, yeah, this is uh, generally what, what, what all this data which is presented, what do they say, what, what can we uh, draw from this data which is, which is presented to us. And then we can state our conclusion of the, of the whole matter. It is important that the students know that the analysis, the discussion of the findings and the conclusion should be reflective of the data which was obtained and presented, as well as the aim and the title of the end of SBA. So we should not have the students um, have a particular title, uh, set out a certain objective, but then when you read the, the conclusion, the conclusion has nothing to, has nothing to do with the, with the title or the objective. So when you read the discussion of the findings, they are not related to the objectives which were mentioned at the start of the FDA document or the FDA report. So they should be encouraged to ensure that these are all related to each other. Okay. Uh, I think I thought there for questions as I change uh, a document here. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Renzel has presented quite a lot of information, a lot to chew on. Any more questions or comments? And as I said, if you have questions or comments, please use the raise hand uh, feature on the right side, I would say right center of the WebEx platform so that I can unmute your mic and have you make your contribution. I see you guys are keeping my colleague Alcian very busy in the chat. All right, Antonio, Antonio um, from Ministry of Education, you have the mic. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, um, sir. Yeah, 
all students do the same topic? If yes, and also can all students do different topics for the SBA? That's my two questions. All right, um, Alcian, I'll leave that to you again. Thank you, Antonio. All students can do the same topic, or you could have students do different topics. We would prefer, though, if you have students doing different topics. It depends on the size of your class. And um, the, the, the work that is required to complete it, the, um, the investigation and so on. All right, thanks, Alcian. From Hillsborough Secondary School, Leslie, you have the mic. Leslie? All right, uh, Dominica Community High School is back. Uh, you have the mic, Dominica. Okay, my question relates to the students working in groups and... Can you speak a little louder for us? Okay, my question relates to the students working in groups and submitting one, one report. I already... Uh, yes, I am clear that one report can be submitted, but my, my issue relates to the division of tasks or um, students' participation in the tasks that they are assigned. Because we know that with groups, you may have certain students may not do as much as they are required to do. How does that reflect in the grade? Very, very good point. I will ask Alcian to address that for us. Well, as a teacher, it is your responsibility to monitor the group. You can also have leaders in the group who will help you with the monitoring. And you just you have to ensure that they do what they are required to do or else they won't be able to get the grade and they need to know that from the onset. That if they do not do what they are supposed to do, then they cannot get the same grade as the group. But um, there are ways of asking students in the group to carry out um, peer assessment, but I don't think this is the forum for that. Right, so as you're just saying, even though you have five or six students working in a particular group on the same topic, the teacher could actually assign different grades to those students even though they submit one SBA. Yes, the teacher can actually do that because the teacher can ask the students to do a peer assessment for each person in the group and then um, there are ways that you can calculate the grades differently. That's it. That is what we do for um, in some areas. If there are some subject areas that are like that. But that's a different topic, um, Sam. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments at this point before we go back to Mr. Renville? Um, let's see who's hands up here now. If your question was answered already, could you please... Uh, Take down your hand so that I can, I see from um, Shani. Shani, go ahead. Hello. Hi. Um, hi. Good afternoon. Actually, it's morning in Belize still. Oh, But hi. my question is, yes, I'm from Belize. Yeah, so it's just about eight minutes past 11 minutes. Yes. <laughs> my question is, is there a grading scheme that we're going to be using to grade the lab? The SBA? I am sure there is no There is a grading scheme, and I think that's what Dwayne, Dwayne is going to take you through a particular project right now and show you how to apply the mark scheme. The mark scheme is there in the syllabus itself under the SBA, under the project, but Dwayne is about to do that with a particular project that he has um, come up with. Okay, before I bring in Dwayne, I just want to remind you, um, teachers and students or Ministry of Education officials, that the syllabus is online at the CXC store. The address is www.cxc-store.com. And remember, the syllabus is uh, available for free on the CXC store. We also encourage you to ask your students to go to the store and download the syllabus so that they can also follow what is happening and try to keep up. All right, 
If there are any, if there are no other questions at this point, let me just check one more. Dwayne, just hold one second for me. Um, Kian Robinson, do you have another question or this was your hand up from before? Okay, you took on your hands, very good. <laughs> and um, my friends from Mount St. Joseph Catholic, if you don't have another question, can you take the hand down for me, please? Thank you. And um, Vanessa, same to you, Vanessa. If you don't have another question, can you take your hand down for me? And we all, um, Timothy, yes, Timothy, go ahead. Um, Mr. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, um, I know over the years when CXC um, had the SPAs, it was mainly for in-school students. This particular MAC fill um, SDA, are uh, we allowing persons, let's say adults, who are doing evening classes to do the same uh, MAC project, or do they do the alternative paper? Good question. Timothy, hi. The private candidates should do the alternative questions to the SBA, while the in-school students are the ones who will do this project. All right. Thank you very much, Arsian. And Leslie, do you have another question? Or if not, can you take your hands down? Uh, Dominique as well, Ms. Joseph, if your question, do you have another question? Yes, I do have another question. As a matter of fact, it's related to the very same question I just asked. As um, you mentioned, the MAC scheme, we will go through the project and the MAC scheme. I have already done so in terms of going through the MAC scheme on the syllabus. And I am not sure that any allowance was made in the MAC scheme for different grades for the students submitting one report. So that was why I asked the question in the first place. Um, regarding um, the division of tasks and how well students do the task. As a teacher, yes, you can encourage them, but sometimes it just doesn't happen that the students um, do exactly what they're supposed to do within a group, that some students do much better than the others. So according to the math scheme, I may be incorrect, but according to the math scheme, I don't see provision for different grades for one, one report submitting. Okay, thank you. I can literally adjust Mr. that. Joseph, Mr. Joseph, the, the math team would not have had that because the, for the math team, we expect all the teachers to use the same math team. Remember, this is a way of standardizing the work to make sure that wherever you are and in whatever school you are, that you are marking at the same standard, which is why we have a math team in the um in the syllabus. So. We are, we are really encouraging each group to, to get the same mark, but I know that there are in some, it, it might happen that there are students in the group who will do no work or do very little work. But I am saying in a case like that, there are ways, in, things that teachers can put in place to vary the grades. In that way, then the students will not be entered in the group. Because if we are submitting group SBA, everybody in that group will have to have the same mark. All right, St. Anthony. St. Anthony Secondary School, the mic is open. Go ahead. All right, if not, I'll go to Brianna Gentle. Brianna? Can you hear me? I certainly can. Hi, I'm a student from Belize. And yes, I was welcome, wondering... student from Belize. <laughs> huh? Welcome. Um, I was wondering, can the teachers help us with the SBA, and how is there a certain way we're supposed to set up the SBA? If the teacher can help you, what do you yes. mean if the teacher can help you? Explain right, that. As we're going through the SBA, can they help us? Okay, I'm sure my, my colleague Alcian will address that what, by what you mean by help us, but the, the teacher certainly has a role to play in the SBA, but Alcian would speak in terms of at what level help the teacher can give you. 
Hi, Brianna. Good morning and welcome. The teacher, as you go through your SBA, the teacher is supposed to guide you each step of the way, not telling you the answers or whatever, but pointing you to where you can find the answers and um, ensuring that you are on task with what you are required to do. And her second part of the question was any particular way of setting up the SBA? Um, Mr. Renville, he went through that where you had like the introduction. There, it's there in the syllabus, um, Mr. Sam. There's right. In fact, and be. just to advise, oh. <laughs> and know that he's going to go through a particular one. I'm sure that that will come up again. Okay, great. So I think it's a good time now for us to um, give Dwayne a chance to go through uh, his presentation. Dwayne, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. And um, yeah, those are very good questions asked, and um, thanks very much for your time and asking for clarifying um, those and providing answers. And uh, I will hope that with the rest of the presentation which I have here, it would also shed some, some more light on um, some of the questions asked, or maybe some questions which person still yet to ask. <laughs> All right, um, so what I've done is to construct a a sample of, of an SBA, and um, this sample of SBA which I've constructed, I've constructed from the point of view that it is a group of four or five students who came together to do this SBA. So the title is An Investigation into the Density of Vehicular Emissions in the Community of Puerto Whereby this is done by a group of students who attend the uh, secondary school, uh, slash high school at uh, at Parisian. Um So the title is saying exactly what it is. It's an investigation into the density of uh, vehicular emissions, and it identifies where in in this it is restricted to the community of Parisian. Uh, whatever, so the, the, the title here gives uh, an overall understanding of what the research or what the SBA is about. So then if you have to go into the introduction and so on, um, you, will, you will find that the that I will also shed some more light. Uh, the students are encouraged to, um, to ensure that they have a, a properly formatted content page. Um, so uh, they are also encouraged to use the automatic uh, content page, which uh, Microsoft Word, for example, um, Allow people to do and to, to generate. All right. Um, and so when as they add documents, as they add uh, chapters, as they add tables and figures and so on, you will find that then they can automatically update it. So that when you're reading an SBA, if for example it says vehicular emissions uh, on page six, so then you know certain that when you go to page six, you will find it. If the student decides to do this manually, well then they will have to ensure that they double check and um, that this is correct. All right, but the Microsoft Office provides this functionality whereby you can automatically do your content page. So if we go to the introduction, Again, we see that as far as possible, because of the limit on the words, our introduction should be brief. So, the village of Prager has one main access road, multiple subsidiary streets, and the main business area region. An enduring problem is that villagers inhale the emissions from the vehicles. The objectives of this research are as follows. And we state what the objectives are to assess the degree of emission along each stretch of road and to superimpose on the map of the village a color scheme reflecting the density of vehicular emission. So these are the objectives of this research. Um, these are the different, the different objectives also. Um, and, uh, for example, this research could have been uh, done by a single person, whereby they make a selected for its objective alone. All right, if it's done by maybe a couple of students, then you may finally may want to add the second objective. 
And if it would get larger, then you may want to ask a, a, a third objective, which may then uh, possibly involve the group going to then find out from, uh, from, from the persons living there, um, maybe the awareness um, of, of the dangers of inhaling um, uh, vehicular emission, especially if you're bombarded with it and so on. So, we have the introduction, and what this intends to do, but what this is intended to do is to give you an overall a view of what the FDA should look like, the different uh, headings and so on, which can be used, and, uh, and then we can be able to talk about the, the how it can be marked. Um, there is a rubric because the question was asked on that before. There is a rubric, and I, I try to use that rubric to develop this FDA sample. All right, um, and of course, it would be good if, uh, if afterwards you can then look at the rubric, look at this FDA sample, and then mark it to see how much mark you would give for this here. So you may be able to find, okay, that at a certain part of it, oh, yes, uh, later on, you missed such and such, so uh, you will lose a one mark here. All right, that is fine, um, because this, this, this work which we've seen here is typical of what the students may do. And the students may not get it 100% uh, perfect, so we, uh, so please don't believe what I am presenting here is, um, is a perfect 20 mark or 20%. Okay, so you may find a way to, to, to cause me to, to drop down to 15% or something with the market using the rubric. So the method of, uh, or you just if you want to type it as data collection procedures, method of data collection, uh, research was conducted over a one week period and during the peak traffic hours, uh, seven to eight hours daily. Each road was monitored for one session, the data collected are as follows. So you see what's happening here is that we are following up from the title and the introduction and it may be data collection uh, procedure. Um, we, we, uh, we, they, they, so far they are related, and we are just following through smoothly from one thing to the next. All right, so here in the data collection procedures, we have just been a bit more specific now on exactly how the data was collected, where the data was collected, from what time was the data collected. So we're giving this information so as to ensure that uh, the data collected is uh, is, is, is homogeneous and not that we go to the students went to one street and at eight in the morning and then went to another one at ten in the night. So I believe the students here are eliminating that question from the mind of the reader or from the mind of the marker of the FDA. So it's stating clearly that all the streets were monitored at the same time on the on the, on the, the peak on, on a for a one week period uh, during the peak hour traffic. All right, the data collected are as follows. Uh, the road and their dimensions, the number of vehicles traversing the road, uh, a measure of visible emission from vehicles, and the average speed of vehicles. And uh, this is done in an, in an environment whereby um, the students are, are actually seeing the problem. So they are actually uh, seeing the, the, the smoke emitting from the exhaust of the of the vehicle. All right, so it's not, a, it's not a, maybe the case whereby in some communities where it's, um, the, the, the higher classes of vehicles alone is being used. This community which we're talking about is a farming community. Um, or a community where most persons are farmers. Um, and the type of vehicles which they may be using and the, the level of uh, emission which may be coming from the vehicle. So, continuing on, because we are talking about the, the method of data collection. Uh, so, in the first case, the dimensions of the road of the roads were most quickly obtained by direct measuring, using measuring tapes, and or by using the plan of the of, of the village or the map of the village. Secondly, the number of vehicles using an identified direction was observed for each street. The speeds were obtained using the Android app, speed gun. 
observation was both appropriate and the mobile app was very economical in terms of time as well as money. Um, just to remind that this is a secondary school uh, estimate, so it would be understandable if a school if a student decides to use a mobile app to track the speed of people uh, against them having to get uh, the police uh, come with their with, with their speed runs and so on to track the speed of of people. And of course in a case like that it's gonna take away from the study because for the moment the drivers Realize police on the road speaker, they will not drive at their normal pace. All right? So, um, all of this taken into consideration here. Uh, thirdly, the visible emission was observed and recorded on a, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, where 1 was the issue of that no uh, emission whatsoever, 10 was the extreme thick black smoke coming from vehicles. And in this case, observation was used as a way to reduce cost, minimize time, and to avoid employing specialized personnel and equipment. The study assumed, and here is really the conclusion that, is, that the students should not mention any assumptions which were made at any limitation. The study assumed that the flow of traffic was constant in all lanes on a given road, and that each vehicle in the survey would have traveled the entire length of the street. The limitation of the study was that not all gas emitted were detectable with the naked eye. In fact, most of the emissions we cannot see them with the naked eye. But given the, the, the trend in this particular community, um, where they have a lot of vehicles, um, you can see the, the smoke coming from the vehicles. Um, uh, the students at their level tell that, okay, it is okay for us to to just use observation based on what we based on what we see and it was mentioned in the FBA that this is a limitation to the study. Maybe when they get the first three lessons and then they then the university might be able to sponsor getting all the data to so detect the level of, of certain that in the in the in, uh, the environment. The data collected were entered into Excel files with headings that include the street name, the length, the number of lanes, the number of vehicles, the speed, and the measure of emission. These files were then securely stored in the researcher's laptop, by phone, email, and a copy launch with the teacher. So we see here under the, uh, the data collection procedure. Uh, from reading this, it, it gives uh, a very good understanding of how the students went about getting the data. All right, um, what we may find is that if the students uh, were fabricating data, then they may not be able to do this section here uh, correctly. All right, and something about this section may indicate to you that they did not, uh, or, or they didn't use a, um, they didn't actually do this. This stuff by themselves, maybe they just have to keep this data because something is passing up. But for the moment, you would see that it's worth in details to explain everything, they how they went about doing it. Um, because while you may not be there to see it with the students that they were actually doing it, um, reading this section, um, it will give you a reasonable insight. Of course, we have some smart students who, who could just create a section like this and um, and to convince someone that they actually went about doing some work, it would be great to be good for the teacher to, to monitor what is happening. So even when the students they bring in the data, then the teacher can monitor it. So uh, the presentation and analysis of data, the two of them done in combination here. Uh, so we see that information on the vehicle, uh, the street, and the, the collected for each were tabulated. Um, as an example, because if uh, um, the student may not want to put this information for each street right within the SB, right within the, the body of the SB, they may reserve the rest of it for the appendix. So if, as an example, if uh, a table is provided here, um, the number whereby instead of putting the actual um, license plate number of the vehicle, 
the student can then code it. All right, so the students will know. Okay, so anybody reading the, the, the file afterwards um, may not uh, cause any problems or the drivers of those vehicles. All right, so the students, uh, so at, at this point here, it is, it is good for us to make a point out that the students are encouraged to consider the ethics of doing research of doing FDA. So in a case like this, they will not want to put in their FDA the actual identification of the vehicle. While they would have observed this for, 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 for their data sake, uh, ensuring that yes, the data is genuine, then it doesn't have to be reflected in the FDA document of the survey and just put a code number for the particular vehicle. So they would have observed the speed, so as the vehicle passed, they use the uh, mobile speed gun, mobile app to observe the speed of the vehicle as they pass, as well as they observe the, whether the vehicle was um, using our visible emission and, and, and to what extent would they read it, all right, on a scale of 1 to 10. The table shows that the vehicle travel at speed ranging between 25 and 60, and averaging about 37 kilometers. The emission ratings included the extreme values, and the mean is 4.33. Uh, then we go on to another section, um, the street length. Um, so that heading, that headings are placed there. So now we're talking about the street length, where a graph can be presented, and uh, the, students, the students here are using a variety of um, measures of present uh, representation of uh, a presentation of data. So use the table, use the bar graphs, and um, wherever they are used, they are appropriately used. We talk about the number of vehicles using uh, using the, the different streets. So a different diagram is, is used here with the pie chart. And observe also that uh, this entire FDA was done on the, the computer, even the diagrams and so on are done using the computer, and um, the students are, should be encouraged um, to do similar um, FDA too, where they can use the Excel or use FDA or whatever software um, is, 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 is appropriate uh, that they're familiar with. They can use these software to generate these diagrams. They can type, they can do the entire FDA as this example is showing. They can do the entire FDA on their computer as if the student um, wish to do so. The highway accounts for the modal number of, of traffic. And, however, this is closely followed by main street and business area. The three combined accounts for approximately 75% of the traffic. Back street has the least number of so even in presenting the data, uh, we the students would be required to present on all the, the all the basic pieces of information, but I, I identify the important the important ones, as well as use uh, keywords um, the mathematical diagrams and so on. So you may you know encourage students to like in this case they're using okay the modal number of, of traffic. Of course, they could have used the highest number of, of traffic. They wanted for the highest number of traffic. But if they're, 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 they're doing a mass FDA, and then you want to use more many terms which they come across in the class. So they come across more terms like mode, mean, etc. So they would use those words instead in the FDA. The average speed by road, by a slash three. So this diagram here, again, is uh, showing the, the average so the students can then also give a little comment on, on what this diagram is saying, what can they choose from, from what this data is presenting. Then uh, the vehicular emission, uh, as I've observed also that even this data which is being presented, again it is relating back to the title, relating back to the objective of the FDA. So they are not presenting unnecessary data or unrelated data. 
So a value for a total emission on a given street was calculated as a product of the number of vehicles, the number of lanes, the average emission, and the time the vehicle spent on that particular load. So here it's going to be explaining whatever mathematics they use in coming up with the final column. All right, so if they, if they use a particular formula, if they use a particular argument, uh, or if they, they come up with their own way of doing a particular calculation, so then they should explain it. Don't just present the table and leave it for someone who's reading the SBA or marking the SBA to get how they come up with a certain total. So that is explained here in the SBA. Of course, a little bit of a summary of, of what the data we can get from this table is that uh, this data accounted for the highest emission and was uh, followed by the main street. The least was, of course, second and back street. And that data now was then used to uh, create a, a map uh, with a measure of emission uh, superimposed. Now, this map, the, the student, this map would not have been. Um, at the student at that level, they would find that they would not be required to use a software to generate it. So here the student is just uh, using the figures of the total emission together with the direction of the wind to shade on this map a their impression of the extent to which the persons living in the community are bombarded with emissions from vehicles. So where the, the, the this area, which is this region at the top of the middle here, this area was accounted for the highest emission, together with this main, with the main street, which is an extension, which coincides with the area, an extension of the main street. Uh, so we find that this here, so what is this good as we would have shaded on this diagram here, because that was, that was also one of the objectives, to create such a diagram. So they would have shaded appropriately according to the level of Mission, which is um, from the street and the direction of the wind, etc. All right, so this would be the data presented, and um, some analysis was done there. The discussion of findings, and again, you see that discussion of findings is very brief. Everything has to be as, as brief as possible uh, because we're dealing with a thousand words in it. So, discussion of findings. The researchers found that the length of the street, uh, the length of the street is not a good indicator of the number of vehicles, the average speed, nor the measure of emission. On the other hand, there was a significant relationship between the number of vehicles and the measure of emission. Further, the measure of emission was highest on streets where speed were lower. Moreover, and using the map, it becomes clear that the western side of Main Street is most affected by vehicular emissions. And we give a conclusion. The researchers find that the measure of vehicular emissions differ by the number of vehicles and the average speed, and that the highest concentration of emission is the business area and the residential area along the western side of Main Street. So this here relates right back to the title, which was to investigate the emission, the data emission um, in the community of Puerto So uh, this is the FDA uh, for us. Um, and of course, following this, which I didn't include in the document here, there are all of them, but following this, we will have the the appendix, which the students and then detail all other tables, especially which they extracted from the Excel file, they can then detail all these other tables in the appendix and any additional information which they have. For this particular research, the students did not use uh, did not use questionnaires or interviews um, as such. But what we find though is that the students were still doing some amount of uh, statistical analysis in the, in the research here. All right, so the reason why I presented this one here is because I really wanted to help us to understand that 
um, the researchers or the, 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 the researchers that have to do in the, for their FDA does not always have to be one where they give out questionnaires or they conduct interviews. They, they can also do different types of research. All right. And again, I will pause here. Dwayne, thank you very much. That was a very comprehensive sample, I would say. And um, I'll see, and I think we should probably take this and make it an exemplar on the website for people who want to look at what uh, an excellent mathematics SBA can be. Yes, yes, Sam. I, I, I totally agree with you. Right. Uh, I've seen some questions in the chat as well. Just to advise people that I know, we know that the audio is not 100%, and what we will do is that the recording will be placed on the CXC YouTube channel, um, perhaps on Monday, so you can access the entire webinar on the CXC YouTube channel from Monday. So again, once again, we apologize for the audio issues that some of you are encountering, but we recognize that the majority of our listeners, 102 of you, are actually um, hearing what we are seeing on this side. Any questions, uh, comments on the model that was, the sample rather, that was presented by, by Dwayne? All right, uh, I see hands. Let's see who have their hands up here. Any hands up? No hands up? Uh, Vanessa? Vanessa, are you there? Vanessa, are you there? Go ahead, Vanessa. Uh, we are not hearing you right now. I can see that you are making an attempt to say something. Speak a little louder or turn your volume up some more. Okay, Vanessa seems to be having challenges with her audio. I see Miss... Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead, Vanessa. All right, we're not getting Vanessa. I see Ms. Robinson. Hand is up again. Go ahead. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, my question again, can we use that sample in relation to the Cape FBA component as well? The sample that was presented by um, Dwayne, the sample FBA. Uh, I'll see, I'm not sure if the CAPE... For, is, for the CAPE, the CAPE, pure, pure mathematics, it's not a project. Not integrated, the integrated mathematics. Oh, the integrated mathematics. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. Dwayne is the right person to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the question? Yeah, um, I, when I... When the sample was developed, it developed with the, the, the developing understanding that the, the, the mathematics concepts which are exhibited in the, in the FDA was restricted to the seat mathematics. Um, if we were to do a sample for the PIP integrated mathematics, then I would have been a bit more careful to include additional concepts so, for example, I might have uh, find a way to, um, to to use calculating, for example, the standard deviation, or maybe using some normal distribution. So, in that case, then I would have wanted to go on to maybe calculating a probability, maybe what might be the probability of uh, someone uh, or the probability on a, on a given day that maybe the emission level on a certain street is high or, or is a certain amount and so on. So a sample for the integrated math uh, would have included uh, a bit more mathematical and statistical concepts. Okay. Uh, Ms. Robinson, you heard that? Yes, I heard it. I heard it. Right. So this particular sample is CFEX specific. And okay. in summary, what I'm doing is saying the one for the CAPE integrated math would be a little more complex. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Uh, Vanessa, I see you trying again. Can you try one more time, Vanessa? Your mic is unmuted again. Okay, Vanessa is there. All right, Alfie, can you just clarify for those who are asking as well in the chat about when there are a couple of questions. One, is it the students in fifth form now who have to do this? And my understanding of that is no. The, the syllabus take effect from when? The syllabus is effecting for exam major in 2018. So the students who are in fourth form now are the ones doing this music? Yes, yes, the students who are in fourth form now. So therefore, students in fifth form would be ending the previous syllabus, so this does yes, not apply to them. Correct. Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just to clarify that, this syllabus, as we know it, started in September 2016. So the students who are in fourth form or 10th grade, it's calling some other country. And so students in fifth form, this SBA does not apply to those students. Just to clarify that. Okay, any other questions? Um, Shanda, take the mic. Shanda Shalwell, you have the mic. Go ahead, Shanda. Okay, uh, let's see who else is there. Uh, St. Anthony, do you have another question or your hand is up from previously? St. Anthony. Hello. Okay, hand has been taken down. Uh, we have from Belize again, from Cairo, go ahead, Elysia. Yes, hello. Hi, good afternoon, um, good morning, welcome. Good morning, good morning here in Belize. Um, yeah. I just heard that you said that in some countries you have the fourth and the fifth, fifth forms. Here in Belize we have the fourth farmers being the last year. So oh, these yeah. students, so these students that are in the fourth farm, they will not be doing an SBA. Am I, am I understanding correctly? In Belize, you have four years of high school, right? That's it, yes. That's correct. Right. Your four farmers are doing CTEC in, in yes. Belize. Yeah. Yes, this 2017. Right. So will these students be doing the SBA? No. No. That's correct? Okay, These so are the students who are starting the CTEC syllabus, who started the CTEC syllabus this September. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, then I understand now. Thank you very much. So just to one other thing. So you start the CTEC syllabus in third form then in Belize? Well, um, the students start preparing because we have a textbook here from Belize and some schools use different um, textbooks. but. Our school starts preparing from second form, so that would be second, third, and fourth. But I, when I get them in third form, that's when they start preparing um, oh, on a full time. Yes, on a full time. Yes. Right. Yes. So this would not apply to the Belize fourth form because that is the equivalent of the other, the rest of the region fifth form. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Thank you for 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 being with us as well. Okay. Uh, any other hands up? Uh, we have probably about, uh, I would say, 12 minutes to go. Glenford, you have the mic, St. Catherine. Hi. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Are you hearing me clearly? I'm hearing you clear. It's afternoon where I am, but I know it's morning in Belize. Oh, my apologies. Yes, it's almost afternoon here. I have a question, I believe. Um, Alcian has answered twice already, but I think I have some confusion in the response there. It's about the group work. So, yeah. Go ahead, Glenford. Okay, yeah. Um, so, um, I think a question was asked earlier if students may be given different 
marks within the same group, but because they have individual tasks associated, etc. And I think Alcian had said that, yeah, you could do that, and you can even get the help of some peer uh, assessment by students. But then I noticed that another person had asked um, in the general uh, forum, if they don't get the same grades, if the students don't get the same marks and they're doing a group assessment, how do we enter it? Is it still a group or do they then become ungrouped, if you will? I, I just need some clarification there. Um, Glenn, for I think I just responded to that just before you asked the question again. And I said that oh. if you have different grades for the students, then it cannot be considered as group SB. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you kindly. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Grenford. Any other questions? Here, last 10 minutes to go. Mr. Sam, I'm noticing that there are several queries um, regarding whether a person can, who does the math, the CSEC math and add math, if they can submit one SBA. Okay. We did not consider that when we were, when the panel met. I do not know, because they are sort of looking at the English A and B, but English A and B, that's really one syllabus, two courses in one, under one, under the same umbrella. But for, for us, the ad math and the math, they are separate in a way, in that there are students who will do the ad math at a different time. And there are also students who do the CSEC math before they do the ad math. So we did not consider that, but I think it's something that we could look at the next time we have a review. Okay, but, the but for now, for now, there are two different, um, two different submissions. Okay, thanks for clarifying that, Alcyon. Uh, is Shanda still there? Do you still wish to speak? All right, to all my friends from Antigua Girls High School or Excelsior High School, any questions or comments from that side of the world? Just to say again, Mr. Sam. Yes. That um, we will be developing a digital toolkit for the syllabus. And okay. In that digital toolkit, I am sure there will be many other examples of, of projects such as the one that Duane presented this morning. And I noticed, noticed that he has put up a mark scheme, the mark scheme, the criteria. So maybe he should take us through that. Because somebody was, I think about two persons asked about that. So Duane, could you do that first in five minutes? I will try, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um so we see that there is a mark for uh, the project title, which is the player from title related to a real world problem. Uh, the introduction, the four mark for the introduction, a mark for the objective, and uh, two marks for the uh, comprehensive description of the of the project. Um, a mark is given for the detail content page with page numbers. Uh, the method of data collection, two marks for that. Uh, in some cases, you will find that the, the method of data collection would be very brief uh, if it is uh, one set of data which is collected from one source. But in the example which, uh, which I presented previously, uh, there was multiple uh, sources of data and different types of data uh, were collected. So that's why we had a, 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 a section of the method of data collection there was. Even though there was multiple sets of data, then it was necessary for that section to be a little bit more wordy than the other sections because it's still necessary to explain how uh, you went about collecting, how the students went about collecting the data. The presentation of the data, we have five marks for that. Out of the five, two marks with um, the data, which is genuinely obtained, is accurate and well organized. So we see that that two marks is conditioned on whether the data was genuinely obtained. 
So if the teacher knows for certain that the student fabricated the data, well then the student can be penalized there. Uh, the table graph uh, uh, correctly labeled, um, clearly and logically stated, and use appropriately and reflect the data collected. If you don't reflect the data collected, well then um, the students um, shouldn't be given a mark just for, just for showing a table. Uh, it must reflect the data, the data collected. And the previous section, which was saying that it must be decreased hinges on when the data is changed in our exam. Uh, the tables, sorry, uh, the accurate use of mathematical concepts. So, like in this case, where the students calculated the task column of that table and the total emission, um, how they were about coming up with that calculation. Is it accurate? Uh, did they err and stop that? Did they leave out something which they should have considered? Um, so, accurate use of mathematical concepts, um, there we see it coming in. The analysis of data, um, the detailed analysis of the finance done, which is coherent and which reflects the data collected and presented. So again, this is hinged on the data presented. So if the analysis is talking about what is presented in the, in the last section, well then um, the students can be analyzed there as well. The discussion of findings, two marks. Uh, the statement is statement of findings is clearly stated, and the statement of findings follows from the data collected. A conclusion, uh, which is two marks, uh, must be based on the findings and related to the purpose, slash title, objective of the project. The overall presentation, two marks is given for that. And uh, yeah, so information is communicated logically using correct grammar. So we see two marks being for the overall presentation. So the maximum is 20 marks for the FDA. So I hope that the report is more carrying about the FDA is a little bit for the FDA than this book has been. And I hope that I call it in high quality. Excellent. So I think this also helps uh, some of the teachers who are asking about the rubric for assigning marks to the FDA, and I think it's very well detailed. And as Alcyon said earlier, when the digital toolkit is compiled, all of this type of information will be in the digital toolkit. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long two hours. I hope it has, has been as rich and informative as it has been long. I want to thank very much uh, Mr. Dwayne Renville, the, one of the resource persons at CXC for Mathematics, my colleague Alcyon Brown Perry, and the webmaster Idel Pompey, who would have um, set this up for us so that we can use this platform for this interaction today. As I noted earlier, the recording will be placed on CXC's YouTube channel, probably by Monday or Tuesday next week. So for those of you who missed it and whose colleagues would have missed it, you can share the link from the CXC YouTube channel with them. And we'll also put the link on the CXC Facebook page. My name is Cleveland Sam, and it was my pleasure hosting you this morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. So have a good afternoon, good morning, and be safe. And we'll hear from you another time from CXC. Thank you very much.